Now, the next topic is when to use lotus. A big question, and you know, you know the problem side, but we're going to go more in depth when to use lotus. So if you have tasks with specific resource requirements, the four specific resource requirements are listed as starting with the compute power, how many cores, the memory, the size of the memory that your, your job uh, or your task need, how long this the task will consume this memory and compute power, which is the CPU time. And also, in some cases, your code will run on a specific uh, CPU model, especially in the case of compiled languages like Fortran and C, that are very kind of sensitive to um, floating points, uh, flo floating points. Uh, art, art so why do you need to specify? Because it's, as I said, it's a problem, it can degrade performance um, for other users. Also, the uh, um, parallel and se sequential processing using those libraries, because if they are using compute power, um, they're using some libraries for, for passing communication between the process, that cannot be done on side machine. And you can also have non-parallel codes, sequ uh, sequential codes, that needs to run for longer and use high memory. So then use Lotus. More on more complex workflow is when you have a uh, workflow management utilities that you want to run, like the Rose, Rose Silk. So Rose Suite would run just on Lotus. You cannot run it on the side um, um, analysis servers. And if you have some repetitive processing, that you can make run all PAL, then it is a good idea to consider uh, um, changing your, your, doing some arrangement on your data, not on the code, because I'm showing here an example where you have the same code that need to be run on a set of data files. Then it is the same scripts running on the, on the data, uh, on, on the set of data that you can do parallelly and each process is independent because each process is using a different data file and you can run it parallelly and efficiently and get your processing task completed. An example like running processing uh, a data file from the uh, SIMIC file um, uh, um, uh, data on the CEDA archive. More uh, on um, Lotus use cases, uh, we have here some uh, Examples um, like the uh, HR high resolution climate model uh, output data that, that got processed on Lotus and that has um, uh, efficiently accelerated the processing time uh, from three months to one day. We have another uh, application running on Lotus, which is the uh, name uh, is a standalone application to uh, calculate the dispersion which needs um, a large uh, uh, input uh, of data to be processed the order higher than four terabytes. So you need a, la a large a large memory size to, to put all your file to be uh, um, processed by name. And another and the last example is um, processing um, um, data from uh, Earth's observation uh, products um, that needs um, large input and produce as well as another um, um, large output. So a few more links on this. I would recommend uh, to see to have a look to the first uh, example because that shows how uh, processing uh, um, got uh, subdivided into subsets, what we call in embarrassingly parallel and it, it was about uh, processing uh, data from the SIMIC file archive and make it run parallel, parallel, in parallel and concurrently on Lotus. So what is Lotus? So we know what's the Jasmine processing capability now. We know when we sh should consider using Lotus and that we need some uh, prototyping or testing or staging prior to migrating to or migrating or porting our code to Lotus. So Lotus, as the title of the webinar, is a Jasmine batch processing cluster. But what is a cluster? So a cluster is any a group of 
collection of computers uh, uh, working together to solve a large problem. An example here, if you take five laptops and nowadays each laptop has four cores or processor, connect them together through some uh, fast network, shows the, the image here, and then you are increasing the computes, uh, compute power from four core to um, uh, 20 cores. And, and in this case, you have a cluster of laptops. And in the, in the terminology of cluster, a laptop here is not just a laptop because it's, it's part of this cluster and it's considered or called compute node. So it's a multi-processing um, compute node of uh, um, four cores. So this is just a simple illustration. Now we're looking more at the, at the, at the title as Jasmine Batch Processing. So we know now what a cluster is. Now, what is batch processing? So batch processing is any application, whether it's a code, it's a script, an R script, a Python, binary, executable, that is not executed interactively or instantly, meaning at the prompt of your command on, on the Linux terminal, you cannot just put the command and hit enter and it's get, it starts running. No, but it's, it's in, in, the, in the batch computing, you submit your job to the batch system, also known as a scheduler. So this scheduler that will manage the computer resources and will schedule the application for execution based on a set of policies. So what is the difference between interactive, since we're talking about interactive and batch? Interactive, um, so the difference for, of batch to interactive is that you don't log into the compute node. The communication between, a, uh, you, between you and launchers is via a batch system. There is no GUI based environments on the compute node and the resources on the compute, on the compute nodes are tightly controlled and monitored. You have a greater power, you have a high memory, but things are, compute, uh, are all controlled. So that's the difference between interactive. In interactive side, for example, there's no control. Everyone is using at their own, um, and sometimes you can cross side machine um, uh, crashes because someone was using a lot of, lot of uh, multi-threaded, which it shouldn't be, or using a task that use a lot of memory that can impact on others. And as you know, the side machine's memory is 32 gigabyte only shared among many users. So that just gives you the, the difference between the two. So now, um, how Lotus uh, fits into Jasmine? So these are the components. As I said earlier, you need some submission node, you need a compute node, storage and LSF. So you're starting from the Jasmine login and the Jasmine um, on your left. So once you log in, you can SSH to the submission nodes. So the submission node is a head node uh, which is Lotus, that you can use to submit jobs to uh, uh, Lotus. And there's the Sign Machine, Jasmine Sign 1 to 5, and the SAMS Machine. They all have um, a capability to, to submit jobs to the Compute Node Lotus, which is here showing as 4,188 cores. We're expecting more, uh, more to come. Um, just um, uh, have a look to the Jasmine Phase 4 uh, article in the uh, useful link at the end. So now the storage, we we have the CDA archive, the home, the group workspace. These are all visible and accessible from the submission, submission node, as well as from the um, from uh, the compute node. As you can see here, I put a dashed line, uh, so the compute node can access the group workspace and the home area. And there's an arrow that there is a write operation here, while you just can read um, the see the archive. And in addition to this three volume as a storage, uh, Lotus has access to two work scratch area. The work scratch here, this one for um, for parallel write operation, and the work scratch no parallel, which is opposite. If you if if your code doesn't uh, write. Um, in a parallel mode, then uh, you can use this one. Mm -hmm. 
So I will I'll go through at the work scratch area. So the work scratch area we have now has a size of 70 terabytes. As I said, it's just for concurrent rights. So if you're running a, a parlor job or a, a job array, for example, and the, I'll talk about the job array because that's, uh, um, well, how come we, we had some issues about this, is that if you're in, in, in Lotus, you can be writing, if you're using a job array and you don't specify in your job script that the output file for every index element of your jobs has a log file, then LSF job will be writing concurrently to one single file. So in this case, if your log file resides under the work scratch, um, that is fine because that is a, a, is a, a Panasis um, allows it here. Mm -hmm. But if your log file uh, or, or output log of your jobs uh, reside under work scratch your MPI, that will be a problem. So the work scratch M uh, MPI is quite large, 250 terabytes. Um, it's been um, um, it used a, a new flash-based storage, and it has better performance dealing with large uh, um, m large uh, number of small files. There are other systems um, which uh, have con they don't allow parallel write operation. So I'll, I'll encourage you to have a look at to the table in this article 176 storage about uh, group workspaces that reside under the Jasmine 4 uh, storage because these, these, uh, these storage won't allow um, a concurrent rights. But I won't be covering this today. Um, so this is just now um, a layout on the Lotus hardware. Why do you need to know this? It is, I think it's good to know this, this, the, the, uh, what is available. So it's a, it's a heterogeneous infrastructure. You can't find it on, on a normal Psi machine. And you see how it's been uh, it's that scalability. So every time we new uh, CPU model were added with the new uh, uh, memory sizes, which you cannot find this if you are on a single um, a single machine. So that's the beauty of having a cluster. And also um, that will help you to choose the um, um, appropriate resources, especially for those um, running on um, 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 running compiled languages or binaries. It is important to know that if you're compiling uh, a, 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 a binaries on a machine, with a CPU model uh, different from the machine that runs uh, the, the code, there will be some uh, performance uh, issues and there will be also some um, uh, issues with uh, floating uh, point precision. So we advise that you compile and run the code on the same uh, CPU model group. This will be um, 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 covered on the next, uh, on the second, um, uh, webinar on Lotus uh, next year. So just a quick look in here. So the, as you can see the Ivy Bridge with 128, we have a lot of host of those. And this is uh, um, quite useful because I think the majority use Ivy Bridge, except to others using Broad Wells. So um, more on the batch system, uh, as I said, it's a mechanism to control access by many users. Many users will be accessing Lotus and the access is controlled through scheduling jobs to uh, a queuing system. And why is this um, um, important to know? Because then LSF uh, is so intelligent to uh, check what resources are available, and also it will manage your job for you. So you don't have to come every time and check it. You just submit it and leave it. So it's, it's based on a principle of allows you to file and forget many processing tasks and leave LSF to manage the, uh, the allocation and all the up file for you. So why do we need the batch system? We need the batch system 
First, because it's, 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 a, it's a cluster, it's quite large to, to manage uh, individually. So you need a, a, a batch, which is actually a software that's been optimized to manage resources. Um, and also to ensure all users get a fair share of compute resources. And make sure that the cluster mm -hmm. is utilized efficiently. And, so, and, and for some times we, we use we use it for tracking usage, for accounting and budget control, and also help us for people who are, um, um, you know, for proposals and so. So we can we can do some costing of the, of the CPU time and the storage used. So this can be tracked on um, on uh, by the uh, by the batch system. So what are the batch system? Um, that we have on, on Lotus is LSF. So LSF stands for Load Sharing Facility. It's an IBM product, but there are others like BBS on Archer for those who run models on Archer and there's a SLARM as well. So these are standard uh, um, um, approach to manage a, a, a large a cluster in general. And what all this batch system share, it, the concept of a batch system is based on job queue priority. I'm going to cover the job and queue priority, in, uh, job and the queue, sorry. The priority I won't cover much this time because it's more an advanced topic that will be covered in the next webinar. But I can just mention that briefly here that the priority um, is, is for the user, there are different priorities. There's priority at the queue level, which I can um, show it later on, and there's a priority on the on the user, which is very it's a dynamic priority. So the batch, as I said, job doesn't run interactively. It goes through the LSF batch system for execution, and when the conditions are right, what what I meant by what I mean by condition that the resources are available and free, then the job is launched. Now. Once you submit the job, it automatically will have some job attribute. The essential job attributes are three in total. The job ID is a positive integer that is automatically assigned by LSF. You don't have to worry about it, that's a number. As soon as you do a uh, submit your job, LSF will print out on the screen or in your or redirecting output that the LSF has assigned this number to your job. Now you can additionally uh, uh, add, um, assign um, a name um, that will be easy um, to manipulate and for reference in your job script or at the submission time. And the third attribute is the owner. So the job, uh, the job is owned only by the login name of the user who created the job. And also the last one is the job state. I'm just going to cover under owner. So in this time, your users are sharing uh, resources. Only that user who owns that job can manipulate the job. So he's only who can delete, resume, or do, do any manipulation or any control. And the, and the other second person who can do this in case when, when a job is causing problem is the, uh, uh, is the uh, batch system administrator. But no other user can, uh, can affect or, or, or modify or manipulate your job. So you're, or every single user is working in a shared and safe environment. Now, um, moving to the queues. Um, we have now in Lotus, we used to have a long time ago, just one single queue. Now there are five queues and they're grouped on the number of uh, uh, calls they, they use or they are configured for. So there's a serial queue. The serial queue is only a single call job. So if you have a task that needs just one call or one CPU, then you can submit it either to the short serial or the long serial, depending on the runtime limits that you, the, that, you, that you need for your processing. So the short serial queue is the default queue, and the maximum runtime is 24 hours, while the long serial is not the default queue, you have to specify, request it in your submission, and it has a runtime limit of 168 hours, this is seven days. On both the short serial and the long serial, 
there is a memory, memory control uh, limits enforced, and I will cover this uh, later. The second uh, type of queues is parallel queues that allows you to run uh, jobs on more than one core, or requests running on more than one core, and they all have a runtime limit of 48 hours. So the parse single has a, allows you to run calls to a maximum number of 16 calls, but these calls has to be on a single compute nodes. While par multi, if you're looking at running your job or parallel job on more than 16 calls, mm -hmm. then you should use the par multi, which allows you to have that number, let's say if you want to run it all on 24 calls, but gives you access to calls in a distribute, distribute across many compute nodes. So you can use the par multi for this. Now, if you're having a, a, a task that needs high memory, um, say 200 or more than that, so then you need to use the, the high memory queue. Again, the high memory queue allows you just to use run task using one single core. So uh, some LSF command, um, some are, are useful uh, here on the table. I put them, uh, I classify them as the submission, status command, and control command. So the, the submission command is the BSOP, that's where um, you start communicating with the batch. And then once you submit your job, you can use uh, the command status, which is the B jobs, B his, B queues. And then you can do some job, some uh, manipulation of your job uh, once it's in the LSF batch system using B mode, uh, B stop, B resume, or B kill. I'll cover uh, some of it. And I will also mention that um, all these commands um, are, um, if you want to read more about them and your options, they are all available on the uh, manual page. So if you do on, on the side machine, if you just do man B stop, it will give you. Um, all the, the syntax, all the option, all the description. Um, on table two, I put the uh, job states. That's, that's an important attribute to the job. And so the job state varies from the time you submit it to the time it's complete. It goes through from state pen to run to done. It might not be completed successfully. Uh, so we'll have an exit value, which is non-zero. That will be an exit. And you might not want to um, uh, manipulate the job by um, uh, stopping it for some time, resume it, then the state will change uh, to, for example, here, uh, P, uh, suspend, uh, P S U S P, which is pending. So it was suspending while the, the suspended while it was pending. So these are some useful links here, which are part of the article on the, uh, um, the documentation. I've uh, put the link to the phase four uh, um, article, which contains all the uh, um, um, latest um, um, migration to 2004, considering the storage, as well as the Lotus Core. So please watch out for detail on this. 